In episode 9, Dirty Rat finds another piece of the amulet and uses it to summon Random Virus, another character from the game. Before I talk about Virus, I need to talk about Dirty Rat as a character, as this is the first episode that kind of pretty much um, gives him more to do. In the other episodes, he was usually just there to be Lord Fear's sniffling sidekick. This time, this is the first episode that shows that he has he has more ambitions than just being the villain henchman. He actually tries to overtake Lord Fear a couple of times through the series. Um, I'm not sure if he's meant to be based or... I feel like he's inspired by the more comical supervillains, like, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's comical in other forms of media, but the Penguin from Batman, he, yeah, he kind of, he is pretty much true to his name, a more comical villain than Lord Fear or Lady Illusion, and it is, once again, nice to see another one of the villains try to be their own person. But let's move on to the next major character, Random Virus. Probably the most probably the most intriguing character in the series. He's a lightning knight that has a good side and an evil side, which pretty much ties in with his name. And it's clear that he has a history with Ace. He saved his life at one point. And I feel like I do feel like that out of all the, it is interesting to see how this one character balances his struggle between his good and evil side. Of course, in a kid film, in a more G-rated fashion, if this was a show aimed towards a more mature audience, it would have been a bit more darker. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Random Virus was meant to be based on some of those edgy anti-heroes from comics. In fact, he's voiced by the voice actor who voiced Wolverine in the X-Men animated series. And he definitely has a Wolverine-type vibe to him. Like, he he just sees himself as a threat and doesn't feel like he truly believes he belongs with the good guys, even though the good guys are constantly telling him that, you know, you're you're good, you, you're one of us, you're a hero. But yeah, but, but yeah, with Random Virus, there's definitely more to him. And yeah, the one final thing I want to talk about, this is... <laughs> um, the lunch the dinner lady gives Chuck a like an ice cream brain cake. Like a it's pretty much an ice cream cake shaped like a brain. And I'm just gonna say just right now, it looks delicious and I would love to try something like that. In Nights Undercover, Samantha gets a job at the carnival and Lord Fear tries to use this as a trap to get Mark and Ace. Now the whole vibe of this episode is a bit more comical as it requires Ace and Mark to go undercover in disguise. Ace goes as a motorcyclist while Mark goes as a American girl. And um I'm gonna say it, but oh what's the actor's name again? Anyway, the actor playing Mark, I'm I'm gonna be honest, he pulls off that dress well. I'm it actually is kind of it actually is kind of funny how it works as a disguise um i I just feel like for this episode it could have been a great way for Samantha to learn the truth, but unfortunately she never does um during the episode she gets attacked by Googler's two puppets and at the end of the episode, she thinks they're birds. It's ah, oh, it it's it's one of those things that you just you just got to accept, and it's another reminder that this is, this is aimed towards you know a younger demographic. But 
apart from that, there's really nothing else to talk about this episode, apart from it's the second episode where Lady Illusion um, starts developing feelings for Ace, and she's secretly sabotaging some of Lord Fear's plans, but um, yeah, apart from that, there's really nothing else that this episode has going for it, and yeah. In the Tunnel of Love, Random Virus makes another comeback. This episode, I feel like they wanted to develop further into the whole split personality aspect of it, but it starts being overtaken by Mark and Samantha's little teen romance, um, getting on the, what's the right word? Um, They start... Pretty much the whole pressure of Mark trying to help Ace is affecting his relationship with Samantha and I just don't feel like this is what the episode should have focused on. It should have focused more on random virus deciding which side he wants to be on. But of course the whole team teen romance gets in the way of that and Yeah, I this is one of those episodes where I kind of struggled this is why I kind of struggled doing a review of the whole series because this is one of those episodes where it, it just feel you just don't know what really to say because it just feels like a repeat of previous previous episodes and there's really nothing else you can say. One thing I just want to say is in the episode Ace uses the shield of justice to um, defeat random virus and where did he get that from? I mean, I thought only amulet pieces are the things that summon stuff from the game. So, w- where was he hiding that? Did, did he have he has he had this had it this whole time or something? Did he make it? I don't know. Plus, another thing I want to say is Chuck is way too t- tech. Savate, Savate, so I can't even say the word, but he's way too good for computers to make a simulation of a game. It's a bit advanced for something for early 2000s. I know it's a bit more common nowadays, but this is meant to be set in the early 2000s, and stuff like that wouldn't be available for another 10, 10 years. So, yeah, there's really nothing else to say about this episode so if you feel like skipping it give it a skip 